Just a quick little filler video before I get to actually recording anything like next week. I'm going to be talking about my favorite album covers out of my album collection. The first one is the first Van Halen album, the debut album from 78. It's wicked. I love everything about it. It has that motion, that kind of, I don't know, plasma or whatever. You could tell that there was just motion within the pictures and these other little, I'm not sure the specific term of it, what it's called in photography. But it has that thing like indicating motion and this was just a great debut. And of course this is an album that started it for many people. This was one of those albums, those definitive al moments where people realized, oh hey, there is so much more to do on electric guitar and there's so many incredible things to do and that's why Eddie Van Halen and this band influenced many people. One from 1978, Judas Priest Stained Class. This is definitely one of the most wickedest albums song-wise and even, of course, the album cover. I'm not sure if that's some kind of Sinestro thing or if that's like Mercury or what the heck ever it is. So whether it's G.I. Joe Sinestro or the Terminator T-1000, that Mercury Man, whatever. This was definitely before them, so this was something that probably inspired them. But anyways, something about this album is just wicked. I have no idea what the heck it is it's, and what its purpose and meaning is. Okay, on the back, for some weird, strange reason, it has these kind of like lights like that. And if you look at the lights close here, from a quick glance and think in 78, it almost looks like some kind of like disco thing going on. Or disco theme or disco lights. Seriously, I can imagine somebody thinking it was probably like a disco album. And it's definitely not a disco album. This is one of those albums that defied you know hard rock back in the late 70s final note on this the music and the lyrics absolutely fit the album cover perfectly from 1976 it's kiss with rock roll over this is a wicked one because it's also cartoonish just like the previous one and ironically destroyer was recorded the same year as 1976 this was finished by november of 1976 and I love that kind of cartoonish uh, cover. It's just wicked. The first one showed them all standing. And then this one shows it with uh, just their faces and a little bit of themed background going on. If you look closely, like Ace has the space background. Uh, Gene's got a little bit of fire. And then well, Peter Chris has fire too. They all kind of do to an extent. Peter and Gene do. But that whole uh, saw blade logo thing with the rock roll over it looks like a saw blade and with the kiss logo up in the four corners it's just definitely epic and then basically on the other side it's the same thing but without the kiss logo it's definitely an awesome album and the songs off and the songs off of this album are amazing okay except restless and wild i've mentioned this before my except restless and wild review that looks like a live album but it's not. It has Frank Herman on guitar. Oddly enough, Frank Herman's be on this one, but he's not on Boss to the Wall, but then he was on Metal Heart. They switched back and forth with a couple of other guitarists, but they created like three or four masterpieces in a row. And this is definitely the better version, regardless who says what. Because like I said, it looks like a live album, and this is the album that I bought back in... I want to say it was 1984, but it was probably 1985. But many years ago. I didn't buy the album, but I bought the cassette tape. Definitely a wicked album. And it's got the band members right on there. So on cassette tape, the inside sleeve was just completely blank. And it was one of the first albums to feature Wicked Fast Double Bass and is going back to 1982. So for back in 1982, an album as heavy as this is definitely wicked. Many of you might not know this one, but this is the band Earthshaker. It's a band from Japan. That is definitely looks like a it definitely looks like a wicked one. When you think of a white flying V, you might think of like Michael Shanker or something. But it's definitely a wicked album cover. It's got the IV thing going into the guitar 
and it's just called Earthshaker. It has Lady's Hand on the Flying V holding it, and it's just a wicked album cover from the band Earthshaker from Japan. British Steel is definitely one of the best, wickedest ones. This one came out in 1980, and it's got the hand on the razor blade and with that logo on there, and it's just wicked. A good 10 years later in 1990, they came out with Painkiller, and this is awesome because it came, it was the return of this cross right here. Uh, the necklace medallion thing, the thing that that creature angel thing was wearing in Sad Wings of Destiny. So that's just a really cool album cover. And it defines the, the heaviness of the album. It definitely fits perfectly with the music that's on here. A lot of people like the cover for Holy Diver better. I think that this cover with Murray is definitely better. This is one of the this is the first Dio album that I've heard and I remember when this came out and got on tape cassette. And it's just definitely a better album cover. And I actually I just like the songs off of this one better because it's like I said, it's the first one that I got. And like I said, I got this on tape in back in nineteen eighty four. And it's definitely one of those uh, cool moments. I'm not sure exactly what the whole specific point about it is. And on this, if they do a Dio movie, they should do a Last in Line movie. A movie that's based on this idea. That would be wicked to see. Cover. Ozzy Osbourne's Ultimate Sin. This is where I got onto Ozzy in 1986. Um, the whole concept behind this one is uh, it's about nuclear war. That's the ultimate sin. So if anybody doesn't know that, um, I love the color contrast on here. It's orange. Um, Ozzy is some kind of like weird green moth creature thing that was the result of a nuclear bomb. Very similar to Godzilla. I have no idea. If he was thinking or if somebody was thinking and thought of that or it was just a really, really weird coincidence. So, and of course, has Julie on here with the hair up, long nails, nice tight pants, and it's just a really wicked album. It's, it's an awesome album. The greatness of it and the scary evilness of it, I guess. I mean, that's the whole concept of it. Nuclear war is scary and evil, so that's how and why the album cover looks like that just all this like cool stuff on here and I know somebody's already did a video on this but I used to sit there and stare at this album cover for a long time I actually had it on tape cassette so it wasn't like I could really see a lot of the stuff that was on there so it even says Pizza Hut it's not the Pizza Hut logo or anything but the Pizza Hut logo the kitten right there the cat and uh, some kind of other market and just other kinds of like cool neat things that are really on here. Just all these small little detailed things. Tonight, Gypsy's Kiss. I don't know if this is, can stare at it and look at it. And then, of course, fans years later be like, oh, hey, I never noticed that. I didn't notice that. That's what's really wicked and cool about this album cover. From 1988, it's Dave Lee Roth's Skyscraper. What's wicked about Skyscraper? Um... He basically risked his life for this one. Exactly what David Lee Roth thought during this time. If he said, oh, hey, let's make, I have a great idea for an album cover. Go up there and you'll just take a picture of me. If he premeditated that and thought of it beforehand. Or if he just happened and went rock climbing one day and like uh, friends or buddies or whoever. Or somebody said to him, hey, see that picture right here? This picture would make an awesome album cover. And... Is this the Wicked album cover? Because it's actually just a real picture and nobody else has actually done any kind of stunt like that for an album cover. From 1981, it's Def Leppard's On Through the Night. This is a Wicked one. There's Def Leppard's famous, Def Leppard's famous triangle logo that they had. Um, this was not produced by Mutt Lang. Um, I'm going to have to put it on the caption here, but I forgot who this was produced by. And yes, I can't look on the back because it's blank on the back right there. But this is definitely an awesome album. Uh, I'm not sure really the concept of this one. It has an 18-wheeler truck, flatbed, which is 
with this big Gibson on it that is coming off of the moon. So it's coming off of the moon and like coming to Earth. It's coming towards us. And it's leaving the moon. I'm assuming that's the moon right there. And this, this huge, gigantic 18-wheeler. Or this huge guitar on this 18-wheeler. No, and it's called On Through the Night. I have no idea the concept behind this. But it's definitely a wicked one. I mean, a gigantic guitar on the back of an 18-wheeler in space. I love this album cover. I think it's a wicked one. So it was either 1982 or 1983 when I saw this. But one of my cousins had it. And I remember just staring at it thinking, wow, that's like a wicked album cover. And of course, if you know this album, you know this band. It's not a definitely heavy metal band. The album cover definitely screams heavy metal and hard rock. But they were kind of like a light pipe rock. Pop rock. A light pop rock, for those of you who don't know who Asia is. From the 1986 album, I believe this is Envy Momsen's third album. It's called Trilogy, hence the Three-Headed Dragon. Trilogy is a three-part series thing. And what makes this album wicked is just the painting. It's a drawing, of course, obviously. But this dragon is breathing fire onto Envy Momsen, and he's blocking the fire with his, his guitar. He's got that cool stance like that. Whoever did this painting is like really wicked and good at art. And it's just such a wicked album, awesome album cover.